Right, so today I'm going to do something that um, is kind of new. It's certainly only happened in the last 50 years, I guess. Uh, and with uh, most people are used to the traditional look. Um, and we're going to, because these paintings, this one's sort of more of a kid's painting. And this one's got flowers, but I'm going to show the difference between... Uh, you'll see this before and after, so right now uh, you can see that the finish on this is very matte. So that's your traditional classic finished canvas painting. But there's a technique out now using epoxy resin. And um, I've seen artists use epoxy resin and sell a lot of art because the finish is like glass and people like, some people like a glass finish. Even so, you could probably put it in your um, your bathroom because it would protect it from, from steam and things like that. So, there's a few techniques with this, doing this though. So, um, what you want to do is you want to have a level table, which this isn't. You also want to have no insects in the room. So it's best not to do this at night when all the moths have decided to come out and dance around your face. Um, and you want to have pretty good light, which I don't have. So I'm breaking all the rules. Now, what I'm gonna do with this finished artwork, I haven't put a varnish on the artwork at all. It's still just the acrylic on canvas. I'm going to put this tape around the painting, which is going to act as the walls of a dam, you could say. Because epoxy resin is the equivalent to 60 coats of varnish, and that's why it looks like glass when you're finished with it. So this tape that I'm putting on is going to stop the resin from leaking over the edge of the painting and ideally stop the paint from leaking down the sides as well. Um, now, some people have a propane gas burner for when you put the epoxy resin on the painting, sometimes bubbles bubbles or imperfections can arise. You don't want to um, come at this unless, what happens is epoxy resin is, is warm and so you can use a hair dryer or a, a flame, a flame uh, burner. It's like a, a flame gun. They use it in cooking for creme brulee. And that way you can push out any little bubbles that, that happen. Okay, so here's my... I'm going to use these bits of old painting frames to level up my, my artwork, which on this table will never be level because I bought this table for five, like 20 bucks and it's a rubbish table. Uh, when I was in Toowoomba, I had a really nice table that I made myself, but, um, you know, we left Toowoomba and, of course, I sold everything we owned and now we own nothing because that's what artists do. They make crazy, ridiculous decisions and drag everyone else in the universe through with their crazy decisions. And, um, OK, so that's fairly level. Now... Here's the trick with this stuff. You want to mix it. It's basically one for one. One part of one and one part of the other. So I'm going to use half of this today for both paintings. And you want to, they give you a little stick to mix it with. And the reason it's not an egg whisk is because you don't want to whisk it. You don't shake it and you don't violently mix it up because you don't want to make uh, bubbles. Now, what they do want you to do is mix it in a plastic container that you'll just throw out. So I just have to go to the kitchen and get a plastic container. Okay, so I didn't get a plastic container, I got a, a salsa bottle. Um, 
which is perfectly fine because we're just going to chuck it anyway. So the fun part is pouring out equal measures of this stuff. Um, so I'm going to go to the line on this. There's a line halfway down the bowl, which I'm going to use as my guide. That's halfway. Now, it's easy to make mistakes with this stuff. I find the only real big mistake is having insects and mosquitoes. When I used to have the gallery in Toowoomba, I would leave it overnight and then come back the next morning only to find a fly decided to land on some flowers. And then I would have to um, unfly it. So I've got a bit of a dribble there. I'm just going to wipe that off. Goodness knows what this stuff does when it's not mixed. Um, you can buy this stuff at any hardware store or... Um, now, just if you can see in there, there's already bubbles in this mix. And... So it's really important not to agitate it too much because you will end up with bubbles. Now there's a lot of, now drying time, basically touch dry in 24 hours, but it takes seven days to cure properly. So it's a, uh, so it means that I probably shouldn't take it down to the art gallery on Saturday if today's Wednesday, but I'd probably get away with it. Um, it'll be dry and I could probably put it in a frame but it won't be as hard as glass until then. So will it shatter? No. They make the instructions on this stuff so small a normal human can't read them. say how long to stir it for because you would never know whether or not until you you would never know if you've stirred it long enough. They don't tell you much. You just want to make sure there's nothing on your canvas that you're not interested in either like bugs or you know this is the last chance you've got to paint the painting. Unless you're a weird artist and you want to do a painting, then a layer of epoxy resin, then paint again, then put another layer of epoxy resin, then paint again, then put another layer of epoxy resin and have a 3D painting. But that would be very expensive. This amount of epoxy resin costs 30 bucks. And I should get these two paintings out of it and not probably another two some other day. So I do have um, bubbles in this mixture which isn't ideal, but in a perfect situation, they'll rise to the top of the painting once it's poured out, and I can then just get a hairdryer and, and warm up the surface and it'll just pop. Kind of like the opposite of a pancake when you're cooking a pancake. You, get, you want the bubbles in a pancake. With this, you don't want the bubbles. You want the bubbles to close over, so that's why you use a hairdryer. So, I think I've mixed it pretty well. It's starting to look more watery and less kind of like milk and water. Um, but it's a chemical reaction that takes a long time to occur, so, you know. Now, all you do is paint it on there, uh, pour it on, and of course, I'm going to put half on there, and half on there. And the effect of this, once the painting dries, the effect of this is quite dramatic. And it, it gives a painting a really modern um, look. So. 
you know, so I, I tend to go for classical, old, rustic things, but some people like things to look shiny and brand new and their house is all white, white carpet, white sofas, white kitchen. And this, this is the kind of person that would be interested in this particular finish would be the person that likes everything to have very clean edges, clean colors, and to match their personal taste. Now, I like things to be old and crusty and um, weathered and worn out, kind of like me. So now I'm just gonna toss that in the bin and never to be seen again. And all you wanna do is spread this out to the edges. Hoping, of course, not to touch it with your fingers, which I just did. If you do this all the time, you'll probably get yourself a little paddle to work with. So you push it to the edge, and it'll, of course, come back towards the middle, all on its own. Back. Because these penguins are very colourful and it's on water, it kind of ma matches the, the vibe that we're going to have a, a watery acrylic finish. It's, it's kind of like a surfboard, so I can't stress enough how important it is to have a flat perfectly dead level table, which this isn't. Um, and you can see with the hairdryer blowing, it blows the epoxy around the painting, and this tape here is stopping it from falling off the edge. If it falls off the edge, then, um, well, it'll just all run off the edge like water. Because right now, this is like a very thick jelly water. And if you can see imperfections, you can use the um, hairdryer to push the epoxy over the imperfection and um, make it make it look better. So where's the imperfection? So it's going to be hard to tell you about imperfections, but when you're doing this yourself, you'll see the imperfections. Um, swimming pools go, I've got a real swimming pool. So what you don't want is all the epoxy to rest on one side of the painting, you want it to be level. And of course, having a table that's not flat is going to cause that problem. And I can't win with this table, it's either one or the other. So you will see it attaching to bits of art that sort of if you've got some paint that's sticking up out of the painting, it'll catch on that. in the middle there's a spot that isn't covered so now and for some reason it was pulling on that side so now I've got to try and how long can you move it around well it's in a process of drying now so you've got to be quick you've got to Ideally, you have an hour spare just to watch it. Um, Does it depend on the weather? Well, if it was really hot, it would stay. Um, it's a chemical process. I don't think it's a heat process. It's the heat that loosens it up. Um, so, yeah, you've got the opportunity. Oh, no, it looks like a hair fell in there. 
Your hair. Somebody's hair. See? Something like that can... If you're a perfectionist, if you're a perfectionist, you will have to come at this with a laboratory style approach. I'm not a perfectionist. I'm just gonna be happy to get the result. And if there's imperfections, I live with that. I've got the 80-20 rule in my brain. But if you're a perfectionist, you will want a perfect room, perfect lighting, perfect temperature. Everything you will wanna do will be perfect. And you'll wear a, a hairnet and a mask and you'll have assistance and your name will be Blumenthal or something. Um, what? See, even just bits of dust could land on this now and kind of stop it from looking perfect. I mean, at the end of the day, you just hope the person interested in the art isn't looking for perfection. If they want perfection, they go buy a piece of acrylic and put it on top. But because, because there's nothing between the epoxy and the paint, it makes it look like, have you seen the candy they make where they, they make a face and they pull it and then they chop it up? It looks like sugar candy. What is that called? That boiled candies. It looks like boiled candy. So these penguins have gone from looking like an acrylic painting to a big lollipop, essentially. They look like they are now edible and covered in sugar. And that's kind of a cool effect. And you can see the reflections. So, so that's where we're at. And right now, all I'm really worried about is how level the paintings are. And I think they are pretty level. So um, I think we're good. We'll come back in many, many hours and we'll, um, we'll finish it off, which will involve taking the tape off and um, essentially that's it. So we'll have a look when it's finished. So as you can see, I've, I've taken the tape off them now and you wanna take the tape off probably a couple of hours after you've put it on uh, because the tape will, will get stuck to it. So while it's still a bit sticky, um, take the tape off. Um, also, you do want to be watching this the whole time. I've had the hairdryer off and on through the whole process just to try and get rid of some of the um, imperfections. And I fear I've got to the point of no return now with it. And as you can see, there's a, a like an ocean effect on part of the painting and it's glass finish on the other part. So it's definitely uh, something you need to be in the habit of doing on a regular basis and get your practice up. I haven't done this for a, uh, two or three years. So um, there's a chance that will settle down, but the longer it's been set, the more chance it is of actually staying in that shape, that ocean kind of waves in stasis. Um, which is cool because I could use that as part of the effect for the penguins is the kind of the ocean effect. So uh, no great loss. Um, you just make the most of it, it's creative. So there you go. Come closer. So I'm gonna pick this up now. This stuff will stick to everything. You, your cat, it'll stick your eyeballs together. So don't touch it until it's dry. Now, um, my, my watery effect didn't go away. Um, some people are really good at this and they take the time to smooth off all the edges so they're perfect, but I don't do that because I'm going to be framing these in a, a traditional frame and I'll just, cut, I'll just cut off these sort of glassy leftovers. But as you can see, um, this is quite watery, so I did it a bit over that side to sort of complement the effect. So uh, the next thing you'll see now will be these framed up. So here we go, we've finished the uh, penguins and you can see it's very glisteny. So you can get a real sense of how shiny the finish is on these. And that's them framed. And here's our flowers. And uh, once again, very 
very shiny finish, so it's a particular taste. Uh, not everyone's taste, but um, if you're an artist, uh, definitely have a go at using epoxy resin. It's uh, very creative and very, very tricky, but um, the results can be quite stunning. So give it a go.